Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank Malarsic and in this video, we're going to be looking at three dividend stocks that I think are currently undervalued in this bear market. All three of these companies I think are very high quality companies that will do very well in the long term. And additionally, I think they are at fantastic prices right now to be buying at. So let's get right into it. If you find value in my videos, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. This is Frank Malarsic. So the first company that we're going to be talking about is Store Capital, ticker symbol STOR. And Store is a REIT, meaning a real estate investment trust. And basically this just means that it's a publicly traded company on the stock exchange and they invest in real estate. And specifically um, the type of real estate they invest in is commercial real estate. And they engage in what's called triple net leases, which means that their tenants take care of, in addition to paying Store Capital the rent, uh, their tenants take care of three other of the major expenses, which are the property taxes, insurance, and maintenance. Um, so a lot of times, um, if you are a landlord that owns some form of real estate, you know, you have to pay property taxes on that. You have to pay insurance for that building and you will have to, you know, pay any maintenance costs if those occur. Um, but for store capital, they don't have to do any of that for any of their buildings. All that is handled by their tenants, which is a pretty cool business model. Um, and Store has a lot of great information on their website about their financials, about their investment portfolio, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we're going to be looking at some graphs and charts from their website. And this first chart here is basically a graph of their total investment portfolio over the last 10 years. So you can see back in 2012, which is basically when the company started, uh, they had less than a billion dollars. Um, in their real estate portfolio. And now just looking forward the past 10 years, um, they've grown that to almost $11 billion on this chart, which was from the end of 2021. And as of you know the end of the first quarter of 2022, it was actually um, above $11 billion. So that's uh, some pretty impressive growth there from Store Capital. And I like to see you know a very steady uptrend um, over time and they are constantly acquiring properties. Uh, the next chart here basically just shows um, their diversification among the various industries. So about 24% of their business is from the manufacturing industry. Um, about 21% of their business is from uh, service oriented retail industry. And then the remaining um, a little bit over 50% um, of the business is in the service industry. Um, so you can see these all broken down. So like RV dealers, um, health clubs, education, restaurants, auto maintenance, entertainment, etc. So they're by, very diversified within their revenue streams, which is one thing that I really like about that. And um, another way they are diversified is geographically. So this is basically a map from, I think, the first quarter of 2022 of all their properties across the United States. So they have um, properties in pretty much all states. It looks like they don't have any down here in Hawaii, um, but that's totally okay. Um, they have a lot in Texas, probably the most in Texas, since it's the darkest color there. Um, a lot in California, Florida, um, Wisconsin, Illinois, um, but a lot generally in the Midwest as well, but they do have, you know, some out West. But the point being, they're very geographically diverse across the United States, which um, for me is something I like as well. And then this is another great chart, which shows the growth of some key metrics. So AFFO, AFFO is adjusted funds from operation, which is a number um, that's sometimes used in place of earnings or income for REITs. So basically over the past five or six years, um, their average growth rate for AFFO has been around 5.7%. Uh, they've grown the dividend around 6.1% over that time period, and their net income has grown around 7.7% over that time period. Um, and talking about the AFFO, um, Usually with REITs, we use the price to AFFO ratio um, as a something that's sort of analogous to the uh, price to earnings ratio that you use with a lot of other companies. So for store capital, um, their uh, AF, AFFO is a little bit above $2 right now, and their share price is around $25 or $26. So that puts their price to AFFO ratio around $12, um, which is pretty good to see, I, I would say. And I think generally speaking, um, that's lower than it's been in the past. I know when I've talked about store capital, maybe, you know, 
within the last six months on this channel, their uh, price to AFFO ratio was probably closer to 15. Um, so it's definitely a little bit lower now, which is uh, good to see from a valuation perspective. Um, and they also talk more about their dividend per share growth and they kind of compare it to competitors. Um, so basically from 2015 to the present, they've grown the dividend on average 6.4% per year, which is higher than all these other competitors they list that are kind of similar. And then they also talk about their AFFO payout ratio, which uh, they show has been declining basically over the past few years. And right now it's around 69% for store capital. Um, and they show some other competitors as ha having higher AFFO payout ratios. So these are uh, good signs for store capital compared to other REITs that are similar. And this right here is just a chart of store capital going back three years. So you can see uh, this big dip down way down to $13 per share was uh, during the March 2020 crash. And before that, they were up in the high 30s, low 40s here um, in early 2020, late 2019. And if you look at this chart here, you can see that they've never really recovered to those $40 levels. Um, I think they got up, you know, around 35, maybe maybe $36 in this range. Um, but pretty much over the past nine months to year, they've just been kind of trailing off and more recently have um, dropped off pretty steadily. And right now they're around $25, $26 per share, um, which for me is a fantastic price. And I'm actually, you know, a little sad because all of the investing I do in REITs is in my Roth IRA and I've already maxed it out for 2022. So I can't buy any more store capital at these low prices. Um, so hopefully it will stay low enough that I can buy some more in 2023, but we'll see what happens right now. I think store is at a great price though. And the next company we're going to be looking at is Leggett and Platt, ticker symbol LEG. They are in the consumer cyclical sector and a lot of the products they sell are related to springs. Um, particularly in mattresses and um, in more of an industrial application in automotive cars. Um, they're involved a lot with that. And they also have some um, types of hydraulic piston technology, I think, that is used in kind of industrial applications. Uh, so they have kind of a wide range of products. Right now, their Ford PE ratio is 12, which is certainly lower um, than a lot of other similar companies, and it's lower than it has historically been for Leggett and Platt. Um, I did a DCF calculation on them a few months ago back in April, and for that, I got a fair value of around $46. And if we apply a 10% margin of safety of this, we get a buy price around $41. And currently, the pr uh, price right now is around $35. Um, so at that point, Leggett and Platt is uh, very undervalued, I would say, and a great buy. If we look at their earnings historically, um, they are, you know, in the consumer cyclical uh, sector. So their earnings will be somewhat cyclical. You can see they kind of have some ups and downs. Um, but generally speaking, um, their earnings are increasing over the past, you know, 10, 15 years. And this is just kind of a chart of the PE ratio as well. So you can see um, right now it's much lower, close to 10 uh, which is pretty much at the bottom end of the range of their PE ratio over the last 10 years. And also uh, looking at the dividends, right now their yield is over 5%, uh, which is pretty crazy to me to think that their yield is over 5%. Like it does not seem like like and Platt is a company that yields over 5% um, just based on, you know, when I was buying it before, you know, closer to that fair value, it was more like 4% or less. Um, but their payout ratio is pretty solid still at 60%. Um, the dividend growth is not really nearly as much as some other companies. Right now, it's only around 4%, uh, but they uh, are a very solid company, and so they don't need to grow their dividend all that much in order to maintain a nice dividend. Like I, like we can see, uh, you know, the yield right now is 5%, so they don't need to grow the dividend all that much to maintain that dividend um, compared to their stock price. And they have been growing that dividend for a long time, around 29 years. So they are a dividend aristocrat. So we know they have a long track record of increasing that dividend. It's just a matter of how much. And I would definitely like to see them increase the dividend a little bit over the next few years, um, a little bit more than they have been. But given the current valuation, um, it's just not something that I think can be passed up at this point. And this again is a three-year chart. So you can see their highs back here um, around 
50 to 60 dollars at the very top and then they dropped all the way to 22 and they actually have recovered all the way to the highs um, but just for a very brief moment around 60 dollars and then currently they're around 35 dollars here um, and one thing to note is that they are below uh, you know pre-pandemic levels which i also uh, forgot to point out with store um, and What's significant to me there is that the rest of the market is still not below pre-pandemic levels. Um, so these two companies, as well as the third one we're going to talk about, they're all three below pre-pandemic prices, um, whereas the overall market is still above um, pre-pandemic prices. So uh, I think it's pretty significant, that point. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I am looking at Leggett and Platt right now as well. And moving on to the third company, um, which is JP Morgan Chase. Obviously, most people probably know what they do. They are a bank in the financial uh, sector. In terms of their earnings, uh, they've been growing pretty steadily. Um, obviously, had a little bit of a drop in 2020, but quickly recovered. Um, so pretty steady earnings growth, which I like to see. And their P.E. ratio right now, um, I think, is around eight, which is uh, very nice. And you can see historically, it's generally lower than the P.E. ratio has been over the past 10 years or so. Uh, so again, a good sign to see there. And this is just some information about the dividends from Seeking Alpha. So right now their yield is around 3.5%. Their payout ratio is very low, around 29%, which is awesome to see. Um, and the point that I like a lot about JP Morgan as well is their dividend growth over the past five years has been about 15% on average. Um, now the downside to that is they haven't been growing the dividend that long. Basically they cut it um, during the 2008 financial crisis um, and then a year or two later they started paying it again and have been growing it ever since um, so their history has only been you know nine consecutive years of dividend growth um, but in the grand scheme of things I think they will continue paying the dividend and continue growing it and as we can see from their payout ratio they have a lot of room to continue growing that dividend um, at a very quick pace and then again looking at the chart the current price is around $115 and uh, they crashed down all the way to $76 in March of 2020. And you know, their price was up above a hundred for sure. Um, probably around 120, 130 maybe. Um, I forget, you know, before March, 2020. So, you know, the point being is that right now at 115, they're definitely below where they were um, before March, 2020. And uh, so this has been a pretty drastic fall for them. And I think, you know, from a technical level, it uh, looks pretty good. They have a lot of volume in this area. I couldn't um, include the volume profile, but they do have a fair bit of volume, you know, in the 100 to 110 range. Uh, that's really going to support them and probably not going to let them fall that much further. So these are the three companies that I think are some of the highest quality companies um, that are at some of the best prices right now. Like I said, I haven't really been buying store over the past few weeks just because of capital constraints, but I was certainly buying them over the past few months. Um, and I actually have a little bit over 100 shares now, which is pretty awesome. But JP Morgan and Leggett and Platt, I've definitely been buying those a lot over the past few weeks and months as the price has continued to come down. Uh, so let me know if you guys have been buying these companies and which one of them is your favorite. I really appreciate everyone sticking around to the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one.